Okay, I hope you are enjoying the course so far. Let's now work together on this image. The photograph was taken in Malta at a sunrise. And let's convert it to black and white with black and white tool this time. And then we will apply further adjustment layers to achieve this result. We are going to work on targeted selected areas, sharpen details to have this water really, really nicely pronounced to have this dramatic contrast. And in the end, we are going to finish the overall light in the photograph. So it will give us this strong image. Okay, let's begin. I'm going to delete all these layers and start from the very beginning. So having this image as a base, as I said, we are going to convert it to black and white with black and white tool. So as you remember, we're going to the Photoshop menu bar, layer, new adjustment layer, and black and white. Okay. Having this adjustment layer created, I'm going to click on the thumbnail and move over to the properties bar. Before I start moving these sliders, let's have a look and let's analyze the image. What colors do we have? The water was a bit, let me get back to the layers. So in the water, we have a bit of a blue and cyan tones. The sky is warm with a shade of pink, red, orange. These rocks and the model, they are less saturated. However, we have pretty complex, bright, the saturated, but pretty complex tones in the image. So in this particular case, the black and white tool will be the most flexible and the most effective technique. Okay, so let's switch on this layer. And first, let's start moving the sliders. So the values we see here, they are default values created by Photoshop. Let's now adjust them a bit to get better starting point for our further edit on this image. I'm going to pull the red slider a bit to the right hand side to see what's happening. Uh, however, pulling the slider towards the right is brightening the red tones and this part of the sky was already very bright so it's not the best idea in the end we would have clipping in the highlights so i'm going to keep it maybe around 30. let's see what happens if i move the yellow slider towards the right hand side maybe like this is too much let's try now move the greens it's not really affecting the image as there was not much green color in the picture. Let's leave it in the middle. Now let's touch the science. Moving this slider is in the strongest way affecting the water. As you remember, the original image had a mixture of blues and science here. So I'm going maybe to move this one position around 100 and decrease the blues which will create nice contrast maybe around this point let's see what happens if i start moving magentas it will probably affect the sky as well no it's not changing anything so magentas are not really affecting the image let's leave it at these values so let's see if we can achieve something more before we start applying the adjustment layers. Let's see if I push the science a bit further. Maybe 200 will be too much. Yes, we are losing the contrast if I'm pushing it too much. So let's keep it around 130. So let's now start working on the biggest areas on this image. Let me just reduce the size of it a little bit with the navigator tool. I just want it to fill in the space we have here available. Okay. So as I said, let's start working first on the biggest areas of this image to set the global light. We can start with the sky. As you can see, the sky in the original conversion is pretty washed out since we are not having these tones anymore. 
let's apply a gradient to darken it a bit from the top. In order to do this, I'm creating new layer, Shift Command N, okay? And this layer I'm going to fill in with a black color and invert the mask. So I'm hitting Command I. Having the mask inverted, I'm going to apply this black color only at the top of our image to make the sky a little bit stronger. So I have the mask selected. Now I'm going to pick the gradient tool and with a white sample color selected, I'm going to apply a gradient. As you can see, holding the shift key forces the tool to draw perfectly vertical line. So I'm going to remove it and maybe starting from here. So I will have softer. Let's now decrease the opacity of this layer. And we can now transform this gradient. We can press Command T. And by dragging the control point, by dragging this box, we can reduce the height of this mask. So if I will leave it around this point, I think it will give us the result that we wanted. OK, that way we affected the sky. Let's now focus on another huge part of our image on the water. In order to do this, let's create again another adjustment layer, curves. Now I'm going to sample very, very precisely on the highlights in the water and on the shadows to make the distinction much, much stronger between the brightest part, between the highlights and the shadows. Remember to keep your eye on the histogram all the time. So having selected the targeted selection tool, I am going to sample on the highlights. I think the brightest area will be around here. So just create one point here. And now in the darkest part of this area of the water. So I can, I am observing this point moving up and down. The more downwards it's moving, the darker will be the sample. So I guess around here. Okay, now let's create the S curved shape using these two points. So now, as you can see, I'm increasing highlights in the water. I'm still not clipping the highlights, which is pretty good. Now I will drag this point downwards. So the water is getting very, very strong. I have achieved a very, very strong contrast. OK, now I can still move the white point slider towards the left hand side. As you can see, a little bit of a highlight is missing in the image. So if I move it in this direction, we will have even stronger contrast. OK, so we have adjusted water at the moment. Now I would like to mask this adjustment layer since I don't want to have this contrast visible at all over the rocks and over the model. I don't want to have such a strong silhouette. I'd like to have this part of the image much softer. So let's see how the image looked like before and after applying the changes. The water looks fine. However, the rest is much, much too strongly affected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert this mask. So I selected the mask. I'm pressing Command I and I'm going to make these changes visible only by painting with a soft brush. So I'm hitting B with a white color. The opacity 70 should be fine. The brush can be pretty large. So I just want to reveal these adjustments over the water. Here they can be strongly pronounced. However, I want to avoid having this strong adjustment, this alternation of the image over the rocks and the model. So here I'm going to decrease opacity of the brush to 20. And in a more subtle way, I'm just going to work on selected areas of the sea. As I've mentioned before, I'm working very, very quickly on those images just to present you how you can apply those techniques in your own workflow. Normally, I would spend much more time and I would be much more precise. I would work on all those details. However, for the sake of the However, for the sake of this tutorial, it is enough to show you how these techniques work, how these tools can be applied. 
so you can use them effectively with your own images. Okay, I'm happy with the result we achieved with the water. Let's see another big element in the image, which is pretty blunt at the moment, are the rocks visible in the foreground. If we now draw a vertical line in the middle of the image, the right hand side is pretty strong, it's pretty dramatic. We are going to sharpen the water in the end a little bit more. So the overall image is losing balance. Even if we have the model on the left hand side, still these areas are huge and they are pretty dark with no details in the shot. We can now work on them to make them more interesting. So let's create another adjustment layer curves okay and let's sample those areas in the rocks which are the brightest and the darkest so we can make them more three-dimensional we can add them more depth and that way they will be much more interesting we will introduce more light into those shapes so having selected the thumbnail i'm moving over to the properties panel and now selecting the targeted selection tool and sampling i'm looking for the brightest area in the rocks i guess it will be around here okay and now the darkest so i think we can sample around here let's now move this point upwards let's see how it affects the rocks how much interesting how much more defined they became only with increasing the highlights don't forget to keep your eye on the histogram at the moment we are focusing on the rocks, I'm going to mask them later on, so I don't worry about the water, it's of course overexposed, but for now I just want to fix the rocks. So we set the highlights, now we can try to drag this point maybe a little bit downwards, but I don't think it's necessary. I think that way those rocks work best, if we add more contrast in the end, it will give us the result that we want okay let's decrease the size and now let's mask the rocks so i am going to invert the mask by pressing command i and painting with the white brush white soft brush over the black mask i have already brush selected opacity 20 is too little i'm hitting 7 to get it on 70 and now i'm just painting over those rocks to increase the highlights let's zoom in a bit you can see on this thumbnail representing mask for this layer how the brush strokes are applied so a little bit more here working that way you are building up all these changes all these little steps and in the end all of them added together will give you the final dramatic result okay i would like to add some light on is back as well so i'm just painting with the same opacity with this soft brush to brighten him a bit more so we have worked on the rocks now when i decrease the size of the image i think that this vignette over the sky is too strong it's not really looking natural so i'm just going to decrease the opacity of this layer that way it looks much much better okay let's select the top layer i'm going now to add another adjustment layer to balance overall lights in the image so new adjustment layer and curves okay let's create another s shaped curve to add a little bit more contrast to the image we can still mask the rocks if it will be too dark over the bottom of our image i just want to enhance the tonal range i want to really push those highlights to the maximum maybe like this it's a bit too strong i'm trying to remember that the natural light at the sunrise will never be that strong so i don't want to go too far i want to still keep this image balanced and quite natural so this contrast is nice i wouldn't go further with this image okay what we can do now we can try to sharpen those waves we can try to sharpen the water to make it more pronounced so let's create stamp of our layers as you remember this nice shortcut alt shift command e 
okay? Having this layer created, let's change the blending mode of this layer to overlay. And now we go to filter, other and high pass. I'm going to later mask this effect because mostly I would like to have it applied on the water, on the waves. It will add a bit of grain on the sky, which is not really best in case of this image. So let's see what I can do with the water. Don't push it too far. We don't want to have this super fake result. Let's try to avoid the halo around the shapes. I think around this 2.6 it should be fine let's hit ok and let's now mask this effect so I'm going to hit this icon representing mask and I'm going to invert the mask so this way I'm going to paint only over the areas to reveal the result so having the mask selected I'm painting with white color with soft brush so let's quickly go over those areas which can be strengthened okay remember that this picture has pretty shallow depth of field even though it was taken from a large distance so we cannot sharpen only this one wave we need to remember that the camera's lens focused on this whole range it didn't focus only on this part it's not possible so to keep it realistic to keep it balanced we need to strengthen these areas a little bit more as well okay let's bring back our tools let's try to push the highlights still a little bit more as we still have a little bit of the highlights missing so maybe with this curve let's try to move the white point slider still a little bit toward the left hand side okay let's switch off the tools now we can see how those changes those quick adjustments applied one by one over the image how they improve the overall impact if we compare with the very first image with the full color version the black and white conversion is a whole lot better so with this example you learn how to apply light globally how to keep the image still natural even after applying those strong adjustments try to still judge which adjustments are still working well which are perhaps too strong remember that with this work with adjustment layers you can always get back you can always switch off some of them you can switch on you can still work on those values when you save your work remember to use the format that supports layers such as TIFF or PSD and that way you will be able to close the image and get back to it even after a few weeks few months and with the fresh eye you can still work on those adjustments so you can change them manipulate them further if you like let's now move ahead to the next lecture and let's work on the low-key portrait